Welcome to Altair Engineering Training and Support. I am Apoor Bapad, working with Altair Engineering India. Uh, welcome you all in SAE Baha 2016 online training session. So, uh, we have already covered day 1 and day 2, that is 2D machine, geometry editing and static analysis, plus uh, torsional rigidity and bending stiffness calculation and concept and theory behind CAA and FEA. Today on day 3 we will discuss about the dynamic crash analysis of roll cage. So uh, there, is a, there are some differences between the static analysis inputs and outputs uh, as compared to dynamic crash analysis. So we will see what are these differences and how we can solve the dynamic crash analysis of roll cage using Altair Hyperbox HyperMesh. We will use this today uh, solver is uh, Radios. And, uh, view the results in Hyperview and see the graphs in Hypergraph. So, as I have already told you, today we are going to use a solver as radius. So, I will select the user profile as radius block 120 and click on OK. So, that will uh, load all the templates uh, and card images and all the details required to do dynamic crash analysis. So, uh, in the process for dynamic crash analysis is uh, a bit different than the static analysis that is front side rear is, is different. So today I am going to show you how to perform the front crash analysis in the similar way you can do for rear and side. So let's open the file for uh, mesh, meshing file. So this is my roll cage. Uh, the meshing criteria also differs for dynamic analysis. That's why I have uh, opened or imported only the CAD file, that is the surface file. And I will uh, do the meshing again uh, for dynamic analysis. For dynamic analysis, we generally take uh, element size not less than 4. So my uh, element should have all the elements should have minimum 4 mm length if my structure is an mm so it should have minimum of 4 mm length so the uh, approach towards the meshing is also different we will see today i am using the same geometry which i have edited for static analysis the same geometry i will use it for the dynamic analysis so i will go to 2d page auto mesh panel Earlier I have selected size and bias radio button. So today I will select QI optimize panel. Enter the element size say 6. Put it as mixed. Here I will edit the criteria. To minimum element size 4. Maximum is not required. Aspect ratio I can put uh, 10. Warpage 30 can be done. Uh, minimum uh, quad angle 140, sorry maximum quad angle 140, minimum 20, maximum 140, 10, skew is not required, Jacobian 0.3, chord deviation and percentage triads are not required here. So I will play apply and OK. I will also keep align and size checked on so that my software auto mesh, when it do auto meshing, so it will keep the flow aligned and also keep the size in uh, remembering the size it will align the mesh flow. So I will select all the surfaces and click on mesh. So once I click on mesh it will start processing for meshing. It will take some time because it is I have given some criteria to do meshing. So that's why it is considering all the criteria plus the geometry and then it will generate the mesh. So sometimes if the geometry is distortion is very high, so it will not follow the four element criteria. There will be chances of having element size less than four also. That we will check later on and try to reduce it. So it is, it is you can see at the bottom, it is uh, keep on continuing the meshing process. So as you can see now my meshing is done. So I will click return. So 
So it is also updating the elements with the quality criteria which I have defined and generating the better quality elements directly. Instead of I am uh, generating a good quality mesh, it is generating a good quality mesh for the dynamic analysis. So this my meshing is done. So I will check it for the quality criteria before doing anything. So press Shift F3. The first check is to check the elements connectivity. So I will check the elements connectivity for point one preview equivalence and click on find edges. So you can see at the bottom no edges were found. Selected elements may enclose the volume. So my elements connectivity is proper. Then I will press F10 from my keyboard and check the minimum length. So here you can see the minimum length is 0.9. I want the minimum length to be either 4 or more than that. So what I will do now, I will try to increase those 32 elements. Uh, 32 elements are failing or having length less than 4. So I will try to increase the length of those 32 elements. Uh, Increasing the element length is required to uh, solve this problem faster because dynamic analysis takes a lot of time to solve. The solver takes huge amount of time to solve. So if my element size is smaller, it will take more time. So it is a good habit to have an average of three to five element size, minimum three to get the results. The result violation will not be much if you take below that. So I will click on save fail to save those elements which are having length less than 4. Then press F5 from my keyboard. Click on element. Retrieve. Click on mask. And reverse. So on my screen those elements are highlighted which are having length less than 4. So I will press shift F2 from the keyboard. Click on nodes and say display. So all the elements having uh, the nodes will be displayed. So I'll say add. Then again I will press F5 from my keyboard and say unmask all. So these are the elements which are having less than 4 mm length. So what I'll do now, I will try to have this length more than 4. So for that, I will go to 2D page, quality index, check the minimum size for, uncheck all other because my target is the minimum size. Then I will click on cleanup tool, element optimize. So if I have an element of 0.9 still it's okay, it will solve. It is not like that, it, is, it will not solve. It's just like that, it will take lot of time to solve those models. Already it will take like hours to solve. So if you have a lesser element size, it will have more time, it will take more time to solve. So the general practice says you should have uh, at least element size as 4 to get a proper results. So just click on that element, it will automatically solve, you can see. Just click on those elements. So I have added the nodes to identify which are the elements are failing. So that I can easily target those elements. Or the other way is, again I will press F10, length, so two elements are passed, so I will say save field, mask, elements, retrieve, reverse and mask, clear all, nodes, displayed, add, then I will press shift F5, find attach, I will find 
the attached elements of this. So there are two ways to solve it. So I will find the attached elements of these. You can see and then I will remesh it. So F12 and I will put 10 bigger element size. return. So if I now check here F10 length. So this element is failing on minimum element length. So now I'll pick this two nodes. So this is 3.99. I will put it 4.1. Similarly if I try to find this So similarly if I try to match this, so F5 mask clear. So in the same way I just need to either remesh it or QI optimize. So there are two options to do that. Either you can QI optimize that or remesh it. Or you can increase the size. You can easily see which element is failing and simply you can just increase the size. quality index So you can have this size like 6, so you can check 4, 4 and 4. So in this way you have to clear all those elements which are failing in element size. So F4 mask F2 clear So F4, 4, 4, I. Similarly here also, you can easily judge these are the size issues. So I will put as 5, 5. So you can check these elements have passed.
So in this way you can increase the all the element size why i am always masking the elements and removing the nodes because it will be tough for me to find what i have cleared or what is left so it's better to have this habit once you are cleared with this just uh, mask these elements and nodes so once you press f from the keyboard it will highlight those elements which are now failing rest it will remove so uh, one more question comes like uh, why there are element size uh, these elements are failing in the size because of the geometry so if your geometry is not pro proper my machine will not or the auto mesh will not de try detect that exactly what was the issue and it cannot solve that so that's why it, it might be possible it will fail so i will not turn on the elements again press f10 length save field mask elements retrieve reverse mask find attach and will follow the same so as you can see here at the bottom zero elements are failing and the minimum length is 4 that's why that's what i want so my roll cage should have or my structure should have at least uh, 4 not less than that 3 will be okay but it will again take some more time to solve uh, the same problem so i'll quickly go for jacobian it's safe for aspect ratio is okay warpage is also okay minimum angle everything is within the limit so my meshing is done so now uh, I will go through the process of material properties uh, giving the velocities and all for the dynamic analysis so I will start with material so I will click on material icon enter the material name as steel define a color select the type as elastoplastic card image as m2 plus johns zeril click on create edit input the value of row initial as 7.89 e to the power minus 9 e as 2.1 e to the power plus 5 new as 0.3 A which is the yield stress as 180, hardening parameter as 230, hardening exponent as 0.2, uh, right now I don't want to enter the failure plastic strain so I will not enter that and I will enter the ultimate stress which is 300. 
you have to input these values as per your material then i will click return again i will click return now i will create the property so i will click on properties enter the property name as roll cage define a color select the type as a surface card image as p1 shell i will give the thickness of my roll cage if you have two properties you have to define two properties let's say two click on create edit then i will select a uh, i shell that is the type of formulation to 24 and n as 5 that will be the integration number of integration points so i'll click return again i will click return now i will update my component so i will go to component update select the component card image as part property as roll cage property material as steel and click on update so for dynamic analysis we always need to select the card image as part except if we are create, if we are creating rigid if you are creating rigids then no property no material no card image then click return now uh, i will click on i will first create a contact so to create contact i'll go to analysis page interface enter the name as contact select the contact type as 7 click on create go to add radio button in master i will select component in slave i will select component so i will select this component as master and click on update i will select the same component as slave and select and click on update then i will go to card image and click on edit to provide some more details like i stf this defines the context stiffness should be calculated so i will enter it as 4 and a gap minimum which will be 1 also i will provide the value of i n x t and as 6 this defines the penetration treatment of nodes so initial penetration treatment of node can be defined by this so i am done with this so i can review the contact which which is there so i can review it here as you can see my contact should have a blue and red color so master is red uh, slave will be blue so all elements are having the proper contact so this i can judge it by viewing the review now i will apply the load that is my velocity so i will go to utility bcs manager enter the name as velocity select the type as initial velocity select gr nodes to nodes click on these nodes i will pick all the nodes and give the initial velocity to all then as you can see here my direction is in negative z axis so i will put here the negative value of my uh velocity so if i want to apply a velocity of let's assume 60 km per hour so in this ca analysis in this software as i have already told you we will follow a unit system which is newton mm seconds and tons 
So I will enter the value of speed in millimeters per second. So if I have 60 kilometers per hour, so I will multiply that with 277.77, which will give me 1666.66 millimeters per second. And I will say create. So once you click create, it will create the velocity and you can review it. The direction of velocity should be properly in the appropriate direction. You can see my direction of property is not, uh, velocity is not correct, it is in opposite direction. So I haven't put negative. So I will put negative and say update. So once you click update, the direction has to be proper. If your velocity direction is in opposite direction, then the results may violate. So I will again review it. So now you can see my velocity direction is in proper axis. You can see here. So that's why I have put a negative if my if I'm having the velocity in negative z direction. So you have to check in which direction you want to apply the velocity. Now the next thing is I will create a rigid wall in front of this where my roll cage will impact. So to create a rigid wall, I will go to analysis page, rigid walls, enter the name of the rigid wall, say front wall, I will create two walls, one at the front, one at the bottom, select the type as R wall, card image as R wall, here the size of the wall is just the representation size, I will create an infinite wall in front of it and at the bottom of it. So this size is just for the representation. If you can increase, decrease, that doesn't come in the picture for analysis. So I will click on create. Now I will go to geometry radio button. Select a base node, which is the front node, any one node here. Click on edit. So I want to move this node in negative z direction. So I will increase it to say 10 and say return. So you can see I have this distance. The distance between the roll cage and front wall is 10. And I will select the direction of the wall to z axis. If your direction is negative, then you have to select N1 and to N3 and provide appropriate axis. If your direction of the wall is in positive axis, then you can directly select x, y, z. Always make sure the direction of wall should always be in opposite direction to the direction of velocity so that the impact will happen. If the wall direction and velocity direction is in same direction, then the impact will not happen. So I will say update. Once you click update, you can see it is giving me the z direction that is if I turn off this n the neutral axis is an opposite to the roll cage that I have to check always then I will go to add I will select the nodes all but it has selected a node of the wall also so I will right click on that node and deselect it and say add. So now all my nodes are in contact with this wall. If you don't add the nodes, the contact will not happen. So I will review this so you can see my wall is in blue, all the nodes are in red. So here you can provide the value of friction but in front impact the friction will not come in the picture. So that's why I am not putting the value of friction. So I will click return. Again I will click return. So now I will create one more wall for the rigid, a rigid wall for the bottom because what otherwise if I don't create what will happen, my roll cage will come like this, hit the wall and tries to go down. That I don't want. So I will create a wall here. 
so my roll cage will not try to go down it will hit the ground also so that why that's my aim so that's why i am uh, creating a bottom wall also so i'll click on rigid wall go to create bottom wall select the type as r wall card image r wall j create again go to geometry deselect as base node select any one node at the bottom edit now i want minus z axis so i will increase this to say 10 and the direction is positive y and say update similarly once this thing is done now i will go to add nodes all so it has selected if i i have clicked on all so it, it has selected a node of wall if you don't deselect it will give error so you have to just select the nodes of the roll cage not of the walls so this two nodes i have to deselect and click on add so now it has added i can review that also so you can see a blue and a red for this you can if you want you can give the friction or without the friction also it will work perfectly so it depends on you whether you want to give the friction or not now i have done with material property giving the boundary condition that is the velocity creating two walls now i will request for some output parts that is uh, the outputs required or after analysis what are the output requires i will do that so i'll go to analysis control cards first card i will define these cards are in alphabetic so first card i will define as engine run so i will click on next 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 and this is engine run for engine there are four important parameters which you need to specify otherwise you will your model will not run so first is engine run in engine run i will provide the value of t stop that is uh, i can put 0.1 <coughs> that is 100 milliseconds uh this t stop is the for how long you want to solve this model see this is dynamic it will start at 0 second and it you can put 1 second 2 second 3 minute 4 minute and it keep on solving so when you want to stop the solver so this is my point it will solve for 100 millisecond generally the impact will happen in 30 40 millisecond and the bounce back also happens in 30 40 millisecond because the distance is very less so in uh, one second it is having 16000 mm distance it is traveling so it will travel and have the bounce back in less than uh, 100 millisecond so i have already given a high value you can put lesser than that or higher than that so this for this much amount of time i want my solver to solve this file you can have a bigger solver time or lesser solver time that depends on you so i'll click return this is my first card then engine nmdt so i will go to preview engine nm dt here i will give the t start value as 0 and t frequency is equals to uh 1 by 1000 of the t stop so my t stop is 0.1 so my t frequency is 0.01 t frequency means this helps you to generate the animation file so in static you have one animation file which is at the last once you apply a force 
either it's zero or one. But in dynamic, you have a, you need to have a file in every interval so that you can capture the complete graph and the graph will be smooth. So and you can see the animation uh, while it was running, impacting, bounce back, everything. So this T frequency will help us to give the animation file that is the result file in every one second, one millisecond sorry. In every one millisecond it will give me the animation file. So that my total number of animation files will be 100 because it will solve for 100 seconds. So it will generate 100 animation files. You can also reduce this value to get more number of animation files. But the higher number of animation files will create your, uh, it will uh, have more space on your machine. So every file has some size like 26 MB or something like that. So 100 files will be like 260 MB or 300 MB. So if you have higher than that, so your result file will like be 1 GB or 2 GB. So if you want to do that, you can do that. You can put it lesser also. This value doesn't depend on the solver time. If you have higher value or lesser value, still the solver time will be same. It just it generates the animation file after every one millisecond. That's it. Now the I have defined two parts. Now I'll move to the next one. That is engine NM element. So I will check the box in front of EPSP that is plastic strain, warm mices and hourglass energy. So these are the outputs I want. By default radios will give the output of displacement but if I want the plastic strain, warm mices and hourglass I have to check these. Now the fourth and the last card is the engine T file. So if I go to next here you will find engine T file. Here it is asking time frequency. So in dynamic my, instead of the values of uh, the animation plot my graphical representation gives me a logical reasons because my total energy graph my internal energy and potential energy graph should be appropriate. So to plot that graph, I want some points to plot that graph. So here I will define after how much interval that point should be calculated. So this generally is taken as one tenth of the T frequency. So whatever you have entered in T frequency, you have uh, one tenth of that value you enter in here. So here I will enter. 0.001 so in every 0.1 milliseconds it will generate a point for the graph so my graph will be pretty smooth so these are the some points which I have to define before solving the file so now my process is completely done so I will save this file first Go to analysis, radios. Here I will type two more commands. First is dash both space dash n thread space four before solving this. So both means it should solve, it should take both the files that is engine file and run file, starter file and engine file and n thread 4 means I am giving the number of cores as 4. I am giving the maximum core to solve this uh, analysis. So whatever the number of cores you have in your machine, whether it's 4 core or 8 core, you can put here so it will take the maximum. Otherwise it will take one core to solve. So dynamic analysis based on the number of cores. So maximum number of cores, the faster it will solve. So I will click on radios. Once you click on radios, it will start the solver window. So first it will check all the inputs which I have given and then it will start. So in the beginning itself it will give me the error. 
if there is any error. So as you can see, uh, my solver has started. So there is no error in my input deck. So you can see it has started to uh, generate a file as animation file A001. So in similar way, it will have A002, A003. It will only and only write up to 999, not more than that. So if you have values more than that, it will not write that file. So here you can see my first animation file it has written. So I will, I need to solve this for some time so that at least I, I should get uh, 10 to 15 files so that I can show you some of the results as it will take at least one or two hours to solve. You can check here, the seconds left is 11,252. So for this much amount of time it is going to solve. It will take this much amount of time approximately. So at least once we'll have uh, one or at least three, four files, animation files. So I'll show you how to see the results. You have to solve till the end and then see the animation. So, so now I will show you how to view the results in Hyperview. So as you can see I only have five or four files. I will not take the last one which is because it is my software is working on that. My solver is working on that. So I will take only four files. Right now I am showing you how to view the results. Once you solve it, once it solver is done, the complete analysis is done, then whatever the animation files, the same process you have to follow and see the results. So I will open this A001 to A004 and apply. Similarly, I will split the screen. Here, I will open hypergraph. T01 file. Then internal energy, kinetic energy and total energy, magnitude apply. So as you can see, my analysis is not completed yet. That's why initially my energy is constant at this end and it's going down. So that is my kinetic energy is going down internal energy is going up. So my once my result completed it will cross each other and uh, it will be in like this I will explain you. So the graph of this should be total energy should be constant. My internal energy should go down and like this and my total energy should go like this. Uh, potential energy internal energy should go like this and then this will become a straight line. Once these two become a straight line, you can stop the run here. That is the bounce back effect. So my main aim calculation is this, where the impact is happening, where the energy is transferring. So as you can see, I have stopped, I am viewing the results in between, that's why it's not converging. So I will show you how you can see the results. So go to contour, displacements plot, say apply. So you can see, if I turn off this bottom or front wall and one minus stress apply. So you can see here
this is the results of only four files so my impact happened already so once i add few more files i can see the complete analysis so this is the way of viewing the dynamic results so my maximum stress is uh, 299 and the location of maximum stresses you can see the proper wave propagation which is the more accurate way so I can now judge what are the rods or pipes which are not coming and having the major role in impact so I can remove them or which are having the less in, uh, lesser uh, importance in any three impacts I can reduce the thickness of them. So dynamic analysis will help me to get a more proper and appropriate results which in returns will help me to reduce the chassis weight. Reducing the chassis weight will help me to reduce the overall weight of my car or ATV. So in this way you can perform the dynamic crash analysis of roll cage. This I have shown for front. Similar way you can do it for rear and side. The process is exactly same. Thank you very much for attending this session. Uh, if you have any queries, feel free to ask us or write a mail to edu-support at india.holdair.com. Thank you very much.